Okay, so we have ingested our food. It has traveled down our esophagus through peristalsis, and now we have arrived in the stomach. So the stomach's uh, one of the main roles of the stomach is to temporarily store food. Um, it's gonna store food before entry into the small intestine because we really wanna make sure that we're not overloading the small intestine with lots and lots of food all at once. Um, the stomach is also going to be involved in mechanical breakdown of our food through churning. Um, and additionally, the stomach is going to produce gastric juice. And this gastric juice is very important, especially for the digestion of proteins. And then we will have a little bit of absorption that goes on in the stomach, just a tiny bit, and we specifically can absorb alcohol through our stomach. So let's talk in a little bit more detail about that gastric juice that is produced by the stomach. The gastric juice is a cocktail of enzymes and acids. So the enzymes that are part of this gastric juice, the enzyme is called pepsin. And pepsin is going to break down the big proteins that we have in our food and break them down into smaller amino acid chains, into smaller peptides. Now specifically, we have some different types of cells that line um, the mucosa layer of our stomach. One type of cell that we have in our stomach lining is called a chief cell. And so these chief cells are responsible for making pepsin. But these chief cells make pepsin in a kind of a specific way. The chief cells will secrete something called pepsinogen. So pepsinogen is an inactive precursor to pepsin. So in, uh, let's see over here, in this picture we can see that we have some nice orange chief cells and they are secreting pepsinogen into the lumen of the stomach. Then we have another type, whoops. Then we have another type of cell called a parietal cell. And so that's pictured here. These parietal cells are responsible for secreting hydrochloric acid or HCl. Now this hydrochloric acid has a pH of around two, which means it is very, very acidic. Now, this hydrochloric acid is gonna do some important things. One of the important um, functions of this hydrochloric acid is that it is going to activate the pepsinogen that was treated, that was secreted by the chief cells. It will activate the pe pepsinogen into pepsin, into an active enzyme that can start to break down proteins. The uh, hydrochloric acid is also going to help unfold proteins. Um, remember, we have talked about how proteins are all formed in a very specific folding structure, and the hydrochloric acid is going to start to unfold those proteins. So those are some of the important characteristics of the gastric juice. Now, in the lining of our stomach, we also have some other cells that are called enteroendocrine cells. So those are pictured over here. And enteroendocrine cells are going to secrete various types of hormones that are going to help regulate the process of digestion. We'll talk about those in a little bit more detail later in the lecture. And then finally, we also have some another type of cell lining the stomach called neck cells. And these neck cells are going to secrete mucus. Now, why do we need this mucus? Well, we need mucus in order to protect the stomach lining from its own enzymes. Um, because these cells that make up the lining of the stomach, they're also made of proteins. So we need, wanna make sure that the pepsin that is secreted into the gastric juice is not gonna be digesting the stomach's own cells. So the next cells are going to secrete mucus so that uh, there's a nice layer of mucus lining the um, the cells of the stomach, and that's gonna help protect the stomach lining from the acid and from the pepsin. Okay, so we have talked about how the stomach is kind of a temporary storage, um, storage site for the food that has entered our gastrointestinal tract. Now, we had started with a food bolus that we created in our mouth and we swallowed down our esophagus. Now that that food bolus has mixed with the gastric juice, it's in this kind of really acidic, fluidy environment, now we call it chyme. So this is chyme. And the stomach is going to regulate the entry of chyme into the first part of the small intestine called the duodenum. And the specific part of the stomach that is gonna be involved in this regulation is called the pyloric valve. We can see that right here, which is dividing the stomach from the duodenum. 
It's really important that the pyloric valve regulates the entry of chyme into the duodenum and you know, the rest of the small intestine because we don't want to overload the small intestine with all of the food at once. There's lots of really important digestion and absorption that takes place in the small intestine, so we can't have it overwhelmed, otherwise that process won't happen very efficiently. So the pyloric valve will regulate the entry of chyme into the duodenum. And the other thing to keep in mind about this chyme as it leaves the stomach and goes into the duodenum is that it's gonna be very, very acidic because of that gastric juice.